that has happened, and we are here, and it's very impressive that we can come together. I'd like to uh, thank you for that invitation. I want to especially thank uh, the mayor of Shelburne. The mayor. And, and, and I'd love to ask the mayor to come forward and uh, say a few words, and then we'll get started on our, our conversation. There's a mic if you'd like to use it, or you can use it. I apologize. I so I have been asked to welcome the commission. Sheldon, welcome. Very pleased. This story is here, and uh, certainly welcome to all the people who have been great turnout on such short notice. Um, I would like to acknowledge some people who are so more for our details of the Um And I'm not sure if any of the other councilors are here. If they're welcome. Um, certainly some of the councilors from the town children are here. Dick uh, Redmond. And I would like to thank Ed Care, introduce Ed Care as the chair of the Community and Economic Development Committee, and thank Ed and Timothy for having me happy today. So now I am time now to introduce Chris. Yeah. Well, okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm not great. I'm, I'm, I'm Mark. I'm Mark Austin. Yeah, I'm just going to get us started with something that's a little participatory. So I'm going to throw out a big question for you, and I'm going to ask that you write down the answer on uh, what you need to take away. A small white one. You don't have those. There you go. Here's the question, and I'm, I'm looking for one word answer, two if you have to, three if you're really long-winded. So one to three word answers to this question. What does the economy of Nova Scotia really need? That's a simple, small question. What comes to your mind as priority? What does this, the economy of Nova Scotia really need? And we're going to, Joanne and I are going to go around and collect these right now. We're going to feed them into the software we call Tyler, and he's going to make uh, a Wordle. A Wordle, if you're not familiar with it, is a word cluster. The biggest words, the ones, uh, the words that show up the biggest in this cloud, this word cloud, are the ones that the most people uh, convey as their response. We're going to do this now and at the end of our meeting. See any difference in what's on our mind? What does the economy of Nova Scotia really need? What this meeting really needs is for Ray Allegheny, our chair, to come up and give us some uh, background set the stage. Um, many of you know that uh, Ray is uh, president of Acadia University, if I got the title right. Yeah. And uh, a long time passionate uh, advocate for education and economic development in our province. So we're pleased that our chair of the commission, Ray, is going to come and give us some uh, background on a little snapshot of where we're at right now in this problem. And then we're going to do a lot of stuff together. Thanks, Ray. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Mark, and uh, thank you so much for the uh, turnout, uh, uh, and uh, Ed and Timothy uh, for the, the organizing. Uh, and I want to get to the discussion part of that, but I do want to give a, a bit of context because I think, uh, you know, uh, you, you may have either read about the commission and the creation. Um, uh, but uh, I want to give you sort of just uh, both from the head and the heart, I guess, um, how we're seeing the work that uh, we're undertaking and, and how the be. Uh, I think uh, you will want to uh, you want to make comments in terms of your particular part of the province. But we'll be I'll, the data I'll be presenting to you is largely uh, province wide. Um, first thing I want to do is indicate look, the, the commission was created in November, uh, created uh, by uh, by the premier, uh, but we're an independent volunteer uh, effort. So I've got the, some of my colleagues here. Introduce uh, Dan Christmas, who is a senior advisor at the Member Two First Nation, also a commissioner. Uh, Irene Dontremont uh, from Yarmouth, uh, a longtime entrepreneur who is also uh, a commissioner. 
We have with us today uh, Susanna Fuller uh, from the Paul Jackson Center of Marine Conservation Coordinator who's on the conference call right now, which will be in the room shortly. And John Bragg, who unfortunately couldn't be with us today, uh, again, uh, in, uh, uh, in Oxford uh, and uh, other places. So, uh, uh, so we group of five, and um, when we first came together, um, we uh, made a couple of fundamental decisions that I want to share with you. And one was a belief that uh, we wanted to see a more prosperous Nova Scotia from one end to the other to the other. Uh, and so that's why, you know, you see the, the bit of work that we've done around one Nova Scotia and OE, our new economy, but focusing on we've got to find a way, not just in one area or two areas or three areas. Um, but we give ourselves the best chance to have growth and development uh, throughout the province. And, and I know, I've known Ed for a long time uh, from when I was at the college. I know something he's passionate about, I suspect many people in this room, uh, about this particular part of Nova Scotia. The second thing that we made the decision early on, and, and history will judge, uh, but we said, look, the track record in Canada of Royal Commissions and Panels is that they produce reports that in large measure gather data. Yeah. And that's just an unfortunate reality. So ours might as well, but we're going to do everything humanly possible so that it doesn't. And part of the reason to make sure we uh, consult deeply and several times, not just once, around the province is that by the end of it, it's not just our report. I mean, this will have, I hope, the power of thousands of Nova Scotians. And again, it's not because I think everyone is going to necessarily agree with every aspect of it, but there will be a force behind it that says, this is what we're uh, going to try to do, want to do as a problem. And ultimately, there are a lot of other actors, us as individuals, but government and otherwise, that are going to need to take different decisions as a result of that report. Otherwise, it will gather dust. So um, that's our. That's what our track is, and I guess my brief presentation is going to explain to you, you know, why we kind of came to both of those conclusions. And none of this will surprise you, and I want to say right from the get-go, I am deeply respectful of the fact that every time I flash up a slide here, you will know what the analog of that is in your community way better than we will. So, and that's a good thing. That's why we're here talking to you. Uh, but uh, we face a deadly, in my view, serious challenge in this province. And I think, you know, if the reason why I think most people have said it makes sense to do this commission is nothing to do with us. It's the right question to ask. So I'm going to explain to you why I, I absolutely believe it is the right question to ask. So here we go. Uh, so there's the folks, and again, this is sort of our mandate in, in, in broad terms. I'm going to make it much more pointed than, uh, than this. So, look, we sort of talked, call this the bucket of ice water because that's what it feels like, right? And that's the reason why I think this is the right question for Nova Scotia to ask. And look, let me try to put it in a way that, that is just how I process this. Uh, and I, you know, I'm born in this province. I love this province. Uh, but if you take where we are today, with all of our work in the province, but with all of the wonderful things we've learned as well, if you take where we are today and push it out 10 or 20 years, if we stay on the current track, you will not have this, the same Nova Scotia that you have today. It'll be lesser. So it's not a matter of being a better Nova Scotia. It'll be a lesser Nova Scotia. And I'll explain to you why. We've got two major forces that, that are acting on us, and I describe it as the jaws of the vice, because that's the way it feels. And the first one is demography. So if you look at, um, if you look at this, um, if green is good, any other color is bad. So that's where we saw growth from 01 to 11, right in here, and then a Slight growth in Angus County, a uh, bit of an anomaly, but there's the growth. Darker colors are better, and there's where we've seen the climb. Again, you know that in a real way. You'll attach names to the changes in population, 
right? I mean, this is not a surprise, but it is a major crunch for us as a province. Now, there it is pictorially. Here it is in terms of the numbers. So the province overall, 09 to 34, province overall will go down 4% population. And if you look at it, so like Cape Breton 13, Northern 10, these are just the, the, the geographic divide. The only growth area, HRM, big surprise, right? We, all, we know both that dynamic. But look, if this wasn't tough enough, so again, I want to just go back and beat on this drum. Our central sort of fixation, thesis fixation, whatever you want to describe it is, is that if we stay on the current track of the problem, and I mean that broadly, economically, socially, otherwise, we stay on this track, this is not even the worst case scenario. This is about a mid to positive scenario around overall population. So A, one job device is you've got population defined, and then to make that worse, this is your labor market right, right in here. So these are people 18 to 64. Guess what we're going to see? We're going to see a aging population, which we know. Uh, we're going to see, again, a static display decline in, in birth rate. And boom, you get a compression in the people that are of working age. Now, municipal politicians know about this calculus quite well because it's how many services you've got to provide and how many people are paying taxes to provide those services. But that crunch, so again, population going to decline arguably by 4 to 5 percent. Labor market going to decline by about twice that, so by about 10 percent. So fewer people in the economy generating wealth, greater demands on all ranges of public services, and that's a formula that obviously is, is problematic. Now, that's only one job device, so you can see why we're concerned. The second job device, again, will surprise no one here. Let's just look a little historically, and my apologies for the busyness of this slide, but basically we're tracking from 1990 through 2011. And you know, just looking around the room like me, I lived in the province through this whole period. So if you recall, a lot of this would make sense. And again, you lived through it certainly in this part of the province. Early 90s, we had a fisheries collapse, and we had the federal government dealing with this deficit by largely cutting transfers to provinces, which had less money than for municipalities, schools, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, we had a downturn here, and you see Canada doing quite a bit better than Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia blue line tends to red. And we, you know, we basically went through a bit of a rough period. And in this period, where you see actually the Nova Scotia growth in many ways paralleling a few peaks above Canada. But, you know, uh, and then you remember when we were at the college at that time, right? From, you know, that, that, those late 90s, you know, mid to late 90s through the early part of the millennium, that was about the best one. I've got a slide that will show it even better than that in Nova Scotia, where we had a bit of a lift overall in our economy, as the world had a bit of a lift overall in the economy, on even where it was felt in the province. But the difficulty is, is that you know we then went through a period where again we, we lagged behind Canada, and then of course you know all hell broke loose in terms of the economic restructuring globally. So um, this slide will show it a bit better, and again a bit busy, but look, we're walking through the same time period. This is the Nova Scotia economy. Basically, that's negative growth. This is positive growth from this side. So again, this good, that bad, and we'll go from 91 up to 11. So back here, again, pretty middling performance as a province, and if you remember being in that period, no surprise, and again, of course, you dealt with the, frequently on the fishery side of this, but the resource industry generally took a big hit during this period. Um, and then if you jump up to the period where I said it felt better, well, of course it felt better. Virtually every economic sector, we show growth through that period. Right? And that was the only, the only time I can remember in my lifetime, frankly, where we actually saw that. And then we went back and notice that these two periods look very much like these two periods. We went back into some up, some down. And so overall, the other job of the fight is that over the next 10 to 20 years, if we don't change, of course, again, that's a big fundamental premise, the combination of demography on one side 
and and basically, you know, mid-level at best economic growth and activity on the other will not allow it. And again, I'm brought this way beyond GDP, way beyond economic measures. We just won't have the same problems. We just we just won't. <laughs> so we're looking at our work as a commission, and today we want to have the conversation with you and get your assistance in having a conversation about what what other paths can we get on? What other things can we do to make sure? Because our our assumption and what I guarantee you you'll see in the final report will be our best efforts to say we're not going to accept that those demographic projections that I just gave to you, that that level of economic performance is going to be our fate. We're just not going to accept that. We're going to say that there is another more positive path for Nova Scotia, uh, but it is going to require something different than where we currently are. Look at, I mean, this is evocative of, you know, and, and every, everybody's heard it before, right? The Einsteinian definition of insanity, which is to do the same things over and over again and expect a different result. So if from this point forward, if we do the same things over and over again, I'm certain we're not going to get a different result. We're going to get a version of what I just described to you, which in my view is just not on. It's just not acceptable as as uh, as an so, I mean, these are just other indicators, right, where, you know, again, you don't need me to tell you this, you don't need to read this in economic report. We, as a province, are lagging relative to even the rest of the country, which, again, in many cases, is lagging relative to the G20, etc. So, uh, all kinds of challenges on that front. Now, on the upside of this, we do have a period of time when we are not without potential benefits. So, I mean, the shipbuilding contract is one look, not a panacea, it's not going to solve everything, uh, but I'll tell you, a project of that scale in a province of this size, if we maximize every possible opportunity from it, holds real promise. There's no question about that. And, you know, I want to be clear, I'm no different than anyone else today. <clears throat> if all that we do is build great ships, which produce more contracts for more ships, which I hope we do, that's just paper stick, right? The, the trick in terms of getting maximum value out of that, and I know this is something that is of interest in this particular part of the province, is how do you get layers and layers of economic activity so a software company that develops a new piece of software that supplies the vessel then can transport that to the aeronautics industry and is selling it around the world as well as selling it to ship clothes. I mean, it's just it's that layering of economic activity, which has not been a hallmark of Nova Scotia or Canada, for that matter. Um, the, you know, Michelin continues to be strong. I realize, again, that's geographic, uh, geographically specific in some way. Uh, we've got a lot of capacity in this province, and I, I'll say that as somebody who's uh, you know, a member of an educational institution, that the institution and the capacity they have to assist communities and businesses uh, in terms of innovation in R and D, we can do better, right? I'm absolutely. I mean, I'm really pleased with some of the progress that we've made, but I absolutely would be the first to say we can do better. But at least we've got the resources. Some jurisdictions don't. Um, the energy side of this, I mean, uh, you know, ups and downs in terms of. Uh, of where we are, but you know, the move to renewables, as challenging as it is, uh, on the longer term gives us some possibility. Look, the, the very reason you live here, and I live in Wolfville, and Dan lives in Mecker too, I, I mean, the reason that we live where we live is that because there is something very special about this province, there's something very special about these communities, and what makes them tick, uh, and we've got to got to maximize the benefit that comes from that. Look, I, I, you know, getting a, uh, you know, back to the argument I know many of you would, uh, would likely cite, but, you know, the reality is this part of Canada, uh, Nova Scotia in particular, pre-Confederation, looked more entrepreneurial, looked more, much more as a trading nation, if you like, uh, than it does today. And of all kinds of reasons for that, you know, political, social, ge geographical, but um, but there's there's something to be said when you look at Nova Scotia on a world map today and look at the way the world has reordered itself to say, have we maximized
maximize all of those opportunities. And, and I think, you know, it's interesting how long standing some of those uh, attachments are. You know, may or may not surprise you. Uh, you know, at Acadia, we still draw heavily uh, from the Caribbean based on the relationships that were made when we were literally trading back and forth in a north-south pattern uh, a long, long time ago, right? Well over a century ago. So anyway, I think there's potential there. The, the whole creative sector, I mean, obviously, and, and, and knowledge basements don't know as many geographic boundaries. And again, just who we are as a, as a population. So, so uh, I think I basically described this uh, uh, already. I want to go back at it one more time as I pass the baton again to Joanne to, to get working uh, as a group. But uh, our fundamental premise is we've got a serious demographic challenge that's not now way out in the future. It's right upon us now. We've got a, a, a serious challenge in terms of the level of economic activity, particularly distributed around the province. But the real question is, is that going to determine our fate for your children, grandchildren, and for us? Or are we going to be able to find our way through to make some other choices around the path we get on? And that, I would say, is the work of the Commission. That's what we're absolutely uh, fixated on. And uh, again, I want to thank you for, uh, for helping us out today. So, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I think we're going to show the results of the word. I'll be doing the uh, on the work that we teach. And just uh, as we're putting it out there, uh, we're going to do some group work together. So if you're in a small group, we're going to do so. Uh, Brent, Tyler's putting it up right now. I'm going to do it. And on your table, there it looks like this. And we have questions. So great afternoon, I'm going to give you a few questions about those slides, so we can all have a little start to start with the top line. And uh, we'll take a look at them, and as we're going to ask, and don't get everybody tackle the top one. I don't want to let the same feedback. So just before we get started, it's, uh, it's always interesting, every community that we've gone to and every meeting we've had with, with uh, civic leaders and with business leaders, we've done these hurdles to find out what is on people's minds when they're coming in and, and as they're going out. So the biggest, uh, the largest word here is jobs, meaning the most number of people suggested that as a response to what this economy in Nova Scotia really needs. Investment. That's interesting. I'm glad to see that. That has not been a word that has come up in a lot of groups. Uh, other than maybe, you know, just by a few people in a small font. So that's good to hear. Uh, sustainability, partnership regards to education, less government, common theme, right. So <laughs> let's have our conversation. We're going to, uh, we do have a little bit uh, shorter time today. We're on our way to Yarmouth as well. We're going to have good conversations, and then we're going to ask you to pick out uh, some highlights your greatest hits from your conversations after we've had about 10, 15 minutes on that. Oh, wisdom in the room. Mark, I'm going to bring up this. So just uh, to go over the questions, the three concrete examples of the successful business of each of the job three examples of generating wealth in the community is one. The second one is the three ideas of the surface and ground. Third, what are the best ways to offer this? What are the best ways to bring you up from one of your area of the business of all? They the world And if you can make two changes, you're going to social support. Okay, and we'll talk to the last one. The other one is the longest. Better. I'm drawing a blank. Man, I must be tired. I can't remember how to get this whole thing.